Yeah, you're not so much committing to the darkness, you're, you're really committing to the light. And, and the unconscious mind is just, is just filled with so much darkness that it just has to be exposed. And what Jesus says in the Course is you have to go through the darkness to the light. So it can seem like, like a dark tunnel, or a tunnel that sometimes you wonder, is there a light at the end of the tunnel? And even with um, like the, the two people that were instrumental in bringing the Course into the world, so to speak, Helen Schuckman and Bill Thetford, they, they were in a working relationship, but it was very testy. In fact, they, they worked in, in a, a Columbian Presbyterian Medical Center in New York City, and it was a testy environment, and it was a testy relationship, and it stayed that way for, for some time, until, until Bill moved to California. <laughs> uh, so, it was one of those kind of hang in there, Kind of experiences, and um, I mean, I think that part of the the sense there has to be a sense of of attraction. There has to be some kind of a sense of, of a shared purpose for these kind of sustained relationships. Even if you're going through the darkness to the light, there has to be a, a great deal that you you share. Sometimes. The two people are not even conscious of, of how important it is that they be together and, and hang in there and work through things. Um, it's kind of like these assignments come and, and can be very intense, but um, you know, if, if one or the other just pops out of the assignment, you know, it, the lesson will be repeated. It's like that Carly Simon song, you know, if you're willing to play the game, it will be coming around again. It's, you know, so you're gonna, it's gonna come around, it's gonna come around anyway. It's just that sometimes, there's a part in the teacher's manual where Jesus talks about lifelong uh, partners, lifelong relationships, and he says, the teaching-learning balance is actually perfect. And if the, the two decide, the perfect lesson is laid before them and can be learned. Very, very hopeful, very optimistic, very mysterious. Only place in A Course in Miracles he talks about perfect teaching-learning balance. But can you give me more on that <laughs> perfect teaching-learning balance? But, but it's just, we could say that spiritually the two have been drawn together and, and because of this teaching learning balance, there's going to be a lots and lots and lots of opportunities to really get the lesson. You know, it's not, there's not like a sense of imbalance, where one is more ready than the other. Both are really ready, and it's worth hanging in, you know, when that, that happens. Are you also saying then that if you can't commit to a relationship, that your ego is in the way? No, it's like I was saying just before that, that, that the, the spirit is going to have to use assignments to, to build a sense of commitment towards the correction or the escape hatch. But those assignments can come in many ways. So for many people, um, they, they don't feel intuitively guided or drawn into a relationship. Uh, they have plenty of relationships in their daily life but not what the world would call a, a romantic relationship or whatever, but there's plenty of mirroring, plenty of opportunities going on, but they, they may be involved in other things, like yoga, or, I mean, so many things, even, even uh, getting a, uh, a degree in, in university, or uh, learning skills and whatever, uh, there's so many different assignments that the Spirit can use to to work on that sense of commitment, even a diet is a commitment, uh, and all of those can be actually used by the Spirit as part of a mind training to start to align the mind with the Spirit. So, you know, it's not saying that, uh, that it's necessary that you have a committed or significant other relationship, uh, but the Spirit can use that as well as many other the signs.
there's definitely the, there's two different purposes. One is towards unification and, and forgiveness and awareness of oneness and then the ego purposes, you know, it, it has many judgments, it has many preferences. Um, people talk about even the dating game, you know, comparing and contrasting like they're going grocery shopping, you know, with, with the date, dating services and so on and so forth. And the spirit can, can use those things. I mean, in other words, the spirit uses what the ego made. What the ego made, the ego made in fear and hate. But even those preference patterns that, that are egoic can be used um, by the spirit in, in its progression towards waking up. So, yeah, there's certain things, like when people come together, there's definitely, for people who come together in a relationship, there's attractions going on there. And that can be used by the spirit because it's going to be evolving more into things that we know relationships. Once you get bored, evolve. frustrated, da da da, you ask for another way. Yeah, you ask for another way. You you really want a sense of connection. You want a sense of trust, honesty, openness, um, a sense of of like a, a reverence that's there. You know the things that that people really the the, the values that reflect eternity. Uh, those are the things that, that the relationship is destined ultimately to to grow into. And the, the ego is it's kind of like a, it's so impetuous, it's so impulsive, it's so it wants immediate gratification on its own terms. It's I I describe the ego's purposes for relationships as kind of like Dixie cups, you know, those little cups in bathrooms and those little paper cups just Take a little drink and throw it away. Take another little sip and throw it away. There's no sense of of depth, continuity, of really hanging in there in a commitment to face the shadow as the shadow comes up and, and release the shadow. It's it's more just motivated by the shadow for immediate gratification and then, you know, it's on to the next uh, sip, you know. So you can you can start to get a sense that, um, like for example, um, the ego uses the body for pride, for pleasure, and for attack. And the spirit only uses the body for one purpose, and that is as a communication device. And it's a communication device to help the mind regain the, the awareness that that true communication is really, we, I call it vertical, it's really with, with the Creator, with, the, with your intuition, with the Spirit. But because the mind has fallen asleep and it believes in separation, it believes in words and so on and so forth, then the Spirit has to use what the ego made to train the mind to come back to what I call communion. That's the point of, of Spirit inspired communication is to actually come back beyond the interpersonal communication, back to that communion with the One. And, you know, it's like the more that you practice this, the more that you don't hold anything back and let the Spirit just pour through you and express through you and express through you, you start to have this experience like, like you're talking to yourself. Like you're just teaching yourself with everything, like there's nobody else in the universe but you. Like, that's what the Matrix is about, you know. You are the one, <laughs> literally, you know. It's one mind, but that one mind has been forgotten, and it seems to have fragmented off into bits and pieces that only know the little self, the personality self. So, yeah, it's, it's, beautiful how you just keep at it, and you keep at it, and keep at it, and then it just kind of, it, it channelizes everything into one experience, and that's the whole purpose of life, uh, is to, to have that connected experience. Just curious, would you say then that because everything is a mirror, then 
the holy relationship is really with oneself then, isn't it? It's not really with the mirrors, that's just the distractions. But they're the learning lessons, right? Yeah, ultimately, the Course came and it is written on the level where it can be most helpful, which, which is it's written for the ego. Uh, the Spirit doesn't need a book, you know, it just is. But the, 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 the ego is, you could say, the ego is a symbol of consciousness, fragmented consciousness, and that fragmented consciousness needs to be unified uh, through training. And we've all grown up with hearing about raising consciousness and, and uh, raising the vibrations and so on and so forth. So, so in that sense, you know, the spirit is, is working with the, the ego, is training the ego, little by little by little, to, to a leaping off point where you can transcend the ego entirely. Basically, the world and the people in the world will reflect the judgments, the opinions, the attack thoughts, and so on and so forth. And then, as you start to release those attack thoughts and those grievances and judgments, it's like the world starts to light up. I mean, you just start to get more and more and more witnesses, loving, loving reflections. I, in my own life, I, I went from being very shy and kind of a loner, and I was lucky if I had two or three friends. <laughs> and now I go around the world, I just have so many deep, intimate friends, but those are just reflections. And then, it just takes you more and more to a point to what your first question was about, where you start to realize that really it's about opening to this experience of being the one, or the one mind. And the, we could say the whole not only transcends the sum of the parts, but the whole is real, and the parts are not. So that's really the answer to your question that the holy relationship is described in the book as if there's two partners working towards this experience of holiness and holy relationship, but, but actually you have an experience of just, of all being all-encompassing. Like uh, there's a line in The Course in Miracles where Jesus says, Mind reaches to itself, it does not go out. Within itself is everything, you within it, and it within you. It's just like, wow, the whole sentence is just very all-encompassing. And that's the goal of, of opening to the mystical experience, and true holiness is really, we could say, an experience of singularity, of just pure oneness. Yeah.